Good morning, Faith Sanctuary. Glad we have a chance to get together again this morning. And let's just take a little time with the Word of God before we begin the live stream of our worship service. This morning, I'd like us just to consider the seasons of God. I, I'm sure we're all familiar with seasons. And let's take a look at this from the Word of God, uh, a scripture we are totally familiar with from Ecclesiastes chapter 3, beginning at verse 1. Ecclesiastes 3, starting at verse 1. To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones. And at this time of uh, physical distancing, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to gain and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. I'm just going to jump down to verse 11, which says, he has made everything beautiful in its time. There's a season for everything that God does and everything is beautiful in its time. Also, he has put eternity in their hearts, except that no one can find out the work that God does from beginning to end. And that's just uh, an interesting little insert from the wise man. We are not ever going to figure out everything that God does. We don't know how God works in all times and in all of his seasons. But we do want to be aware that God does work according to seasons. Even consider Jesus when we think of him at the, the time that he went to a wedding in Cana of Galilee. Uh, his mother knew that these people had a need. They had run out of wine. What are we going to do? It's embarrassing. We have no wine for our guests. And his mother said, Jesus, take care of this, to paraphrase a little bit. And he said, woman, my time <clears throat> has not yet come. This is uh, recorded for us in John chapter 2. And, and we see that, that even in Jesus' life, he figured, well, my season hasn't yet arrived, but God has a way of bringing us into seasons at times of his choosing, not necessarily of our choosing. God controls the changes of the seasons in our lives, and we need to be aware of that and thank him for that. <clears throat> now, when we think of seasons, we, we live in Canada, and we have four seasons that we enjoy. Well, most of us enjoy, and certainly we experience all of these seasons. A time that we see uh, our, our earth change, our environment change, our uh, globe is tilted at this sort of 23 degree angle to the sun, and depending on how we are tilted, whether the northern hemisphere is tilted toward the sun or later on in our circuit around uh, our orbit around the sun, the southern hemisphere is tilted toward the sun. This controls our seasons, and, and, and so we are quite well aware of that. Guinness Book of World Record tells us, uh, records tells us about a town in Russia called um, Verkhoyansk, Verkhoyansk. My Russian isn't that good this morning. Uh, but this place has had the widest temperature swings that the world has seen from a record low of 67.8 degrees Celsius. You heard that right, minus 67.8, up to a high of 37.3 
Celsius. So from January, minus 67.8 to July, uh, plus 37.3. That's a 105 degree Celsius swing. Seasons. We go from highs to lows, and this is all a part of what we experience. In our lives, we have this. We have seasons of life that we are quite familiar with, from childhood to adolescence uh, to young adulthood uh, to our child-rearing years. And then, of course, we have the emptiness syndrome and retirement. And these are seasons in life. And, uh, you know, sometimes we're not always happy with the season we're in. Those who are really young want to be old. Those who are old certainly wish they were younger. But these are seasons that have been instituted that God has put in place in our lives and in our existence. And, and certainly not just age, but we have things that cause us to have emotional seasons times that we have joy and bliss because of good things that are happening in our lives. Our health is good, our jobs are good, our family is good, and, and we go through these seasons of joy and bliss. Not a problem. Enjoy them and give God thanks. We also have times of adversity, and, and we know that, that that season is also going to come in our lives, times when our health isn't so good when we've lost our job, when we're having issues with our children and our spouse and things just aren't well. These are seasons that we go through. And this applies to everybody. You remember that, that little verse in Psalm uh, 35, uh, Psalm 34 uh, and, and verse 19. What does it say? Many are the afflictions of the righteous. It's not just a matter that uh, bad things happen to bad people. Good things happen to bad people, and bad things happen to good people. We go through various seasons in our lives. But as we read in Psalm 30, verse 5, we, we have these shifts. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. We go through these seasons. And it's, it's wise for us to recognize that there is value to these seasons. These things don't just happen and, and there's no rhyme or reason to them. God has instituted these things and we need to be aware of seasons and just roll with them and get out of them what God intends for us to get out of them. Learn, grow, and, and experience God in different ways as we go through different seasons. There's a, a bit of a sad story, not a bit of, a, a very sad story that we read in 2 Samuel chapter 11. Uh, it begins at verse 1 and, of course, goes through uh, some, some portion of Scripture from that point on. It says that, that at, at this time, it was a time when kings go to war. Uh, there was a time, a season, for war in, in that time in the, in the uh, ancient Near East. And David, in this passage, stayed home. Now we know that he was moving on. He was no longer the young man, the young warrior he was. But he stayed home and sent Joab and the army out to the war. Well, uh, as they went out and they were doing their thing, David was at home shall we say, taking it a little bit easy. And I won't go through all of the details of the story of David and Bathsheba. It's, it's uh, outlined here in chapter 11, and we have heard this, I'm sure, many, many times. David uh, was not sinning by not going out to the battle, but by not doing what it was the season to do, it actually opened him up to terrible sin. And, and so I, I'm not saying that every decision we make not to get in fully into a particular season will lead us to the kind of disasters that, that David ended up in, but it's just to make the point 
that there are times and seasons in our lives we need to experience them. We need to live through them. We need to understand what God is trying to accomplish in us and with us during these seasons and be present as we go through these particular times and seasons in our lives. Uh, David ended up uh, having a child from an adulterous relationship with Bathsheba and that child died. We, we see that there are decisions that we make. David made this decision to have this illicit affair with Bathsheba. Uh, this child was born, God said, as an act of judgment, this child will die. We do have to understand and realize that there are decisions we make, things that we bring upon ourselves, things that we enter into that do have consequences. And David came upon a season of loss uh, because of his sin and what he and Bathsheba had done, uh, a season of grief, a season of, of just losing something that was very precious. This was a season of his own making. And we do need to be aware of the fact that we can end up in these times, in these situations, because of things that we choose to do. Now, it is good for us to examine our lives. We might be in a particular season right now. It is good for us to take a look and say, God, is this something that you have just brought into my life to strengthen me, to uplift me, to help me to grow? Or is this something I've brought on myself? Is there something I need to repent of? Something I need to come to you with, with, with great humility and with great honesty and say, God, help me. I have brought this mess upon myself. I am in this season through my own doing, but God, I'm asking for your help. He is always ready, willing, and able to help us. And we are quite familiar with the psalm uh, or the reading from Psalm 51, where David came with great humility, with great contrition, uh, realizing he had sinned, asking God to help him, to, to receive him, to forgive him, and not to take his Holy Spirit from him. So God sets times and seasons in our lives. We are familiar with Job. We talk about him all the time. He had a season of great gain. Uh, his wealth was great. His, his family was great. And then he entered a season of loss, terrible loss. Everything that was precious to him was gone. His children uh, died. His wealth was gone. His wife turned against him. His friends turned against him. We need to to understand in our seasons when everything seems to go, be going so well, don't get to the height of thinking this is all there will ever be. We can drop very low as Job did, but again, don't think that because you might be low at this time, going through a season of trial, of loss, of anguish, that that is all there is to life. Weeping may endure for the night, joy comes in the morning, and then we could go into another night and have another morning. This is the way seasons work. You think of a young man like Joseph, who from his tender years uh, had great revelations from God as to what his future would be. And, and Joseph uh, understood that God's hand was on his life. He didn't understand that there were going to be some seasons that would come in his life the season of slavery, the season of wrongful accusation of why, by his, his master's wife that he had uh, raped her and, and abused her, a season of, of being in jail, of being uh, just without hope, a season of forgetfulness where those he helped forgot about him when they were released. Joseph went through all of this from the heights of the love and appreciation and special treatment by his father through years of, of uh, 13 years from 17 to 30, where he was in uh, an Egyptian 
uh, in Egyptian slavery, in an Egyptian prison, and then in an instant, God changed his season, and he came before Pharaoh and was elevated to the height of becoming actually the prime minister of, of Egypt and helping them to get through the crisis that they were facing. And so these seasons came in his life, and it is very important for us to recognize and realize that these are things we will face. Seasons come and seasons go, but we do need to understand that all of this is in the will and plan of God. Now, generally, when God sets our seasons in motion, we, we don't know exactly what is happening. As we read in Ecclesiastes, uh, that, that last verse, uh, in verse 11, it says, uh, no one can find out the work that God does from beginning to end. We just have to trust in him. We just have to know that he has our lives in his hand. Now, when we think of this, there's a verse we often quote from Romans chapter 8, verse 28, and it certainly does apply. And we know, not that we think, not that we hope, and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. God will take us through whatever season we happen to be going through. And, and just as, as surely as God uh, takes nature through its seasons, we know that God will take us through our seasons. We have springtime that we are enjoying at this point, my favorite time of the year, my favorite season of the year. Why? Well, the buds are coming out. The leaves are starting to come out on the trees. We, we see uh, the whole of nature, as it were, just coming back to life. Well, that leads us into a season of growth, a season of, of harvest and reaping when we come into the fall. And then certainly in, in Canada, where we experience the whole cycle of these four seasons, we come to a season of of what looks like deadness, what looks like just there are no leaves, there's no fruit. It would seem that everything is dead, but in fact, this is just a preparation for the next season of growth, the next season of productive productivity, the next season of harvest. And so we need to understand this in our lives. You might be in winter right now in your life. Yes, it may be spring outside, but you may be going through all kinds of situations in your own life that would indicate that you are in the winter season. Winter isn't a time of death. Winter is just a time of transition. It comes between a time of harvest and a time of new growth. It comes between a time of enjoying the fruit of our labor and a time of starting all over again. And guess what? This comes in, in a, a recurring sequence. This is not something we should be uh, unaware of, something that we should not expect. This is what God does in nature, and we see that reflected in our own lives. And so I'd like to encourage us today, stay in the will of God. Stay in the season that God has placed us in. We don't know when these things will change. We're not aware of all the things that God does, and our times are in his hands. But let us be fully conscious and cognizant of the fact that God is leading us. God is guiding us. Our lives are hid with Christ and God. He knows what season we are in, and he knows how to get us through into the next season and to strengthen us to be able to, to thrive in the next season that comes. And so I, I just like to read a, a little quote from a man by the name of Andrew Murray. Now, this goes back into the 19th century. He was born early in the 19th century, lived into early in the 20th century. He was of Scottish heritage. His parents had gone to South Africa as missionaries, and so he grew up as a missionary kid and became a pastor, a writer. And here's what he said uh, about the seasons that, uh, that, um, that God took him through. First, 
he, he brought me in his will into a straight place. Now that's, that's just an old uh, English word for a tight place, tight corners in a bad situation. Uh, in that fact, I will rest. It's God who brought me here. Next, he, he will keep me here in his love and give me grace to behave as his child. Uh, God knows how to take us into these situations and he knows how to give us the grace to live as his child and endure. Then he will make my trial a blessing, teaching me the lessons he intends me to learn. And so whatever you're in, understand that God doesn't give us trials to destroy us. He will turn these into blessings for us and certainly for those that we interact with. And so he, he's teaching me the lessons he intends me to learn and working the grace he means to bestow. God is giving us grace and he wants us to learn in this time that we can also dispense grace to others as they have need. Last, in his good time, he can bring me out again. He knows when and he knows how. So let me say, uh, I am here by God's appointment, by his keeping, under his training for his time. Let me read that again. I am here by God's appointment. Believe that. God knows all things. Now, we might see that we have uh, done things that have brought us outside of the will of God into bad situations. But if you're living for God and you are, are walking the walk and, and, and doing as God would have you to do, understand that you might be in a season and it's by God's appointment. And he will keep you in that season and you are under his training and development. God is trying to do something in you and it is for his time. God has given us this, this time to go through this season and, and let's do this. I have been through whatever seasons I have been through, but God, you are the one who has seen me through. I might be in a season now as our world is in a season of loss, of uncertainty, of, of trial, of disease. God, yes, we're in the season, but still we can lift our hands and give honor, praise, and glory to you. You are our God, and we thank you. You will take us through whatever season we are facing. We can put our trust safely in you. You are God. You are God alone, and we worship you, and we give you thanks. God bless you. Let's get ready for church. Let's get ready to just worship God together as the body of Christ. In a few minutes, we'll come back together for our live stream, and God be with you, each and every one. Let's live through these seasons with total faith and trust in our God.